dear brothers and sisters in Christ, how do we respond to hurts and offenses? Jesus gives us some valuable teaching in today's gospel. Instead of an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, forgiving others is practical and logical because if someone flags out an eye in revenge that does not to solve a problem and then there are two people without eyes fracking out a truth in revenge does not solve a problem and then there are two people without teeth but when Jesus says to offer no resistance to someone who is evil, we might wonder if that is wise. Would that allow evil to triumph? In the life of Jesus, we see that he did not offer resistance to the evil inflicted on him. And he was being crucified, he prayed, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. But if we take it into our own hands to eradicate evil, might we not run the risk of going too far and end up just trying to assert to a victory for the sake of victory? Jesus continues by teaching us whom to love instead of loving only those whom we like or who love us. Jesus says to love our enemies and pray for those who persecute us. This is surely good psychology as praying for those who hurt us, free us, and give us peace. Then Jesus says something that may even alarm us. By following his advice, we will become sons of our Father in heaven, which means if we do not act like this, we will not be two sons or daughters of our Heavenly Father. It reminds us of Jesus' teaching in the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us our trespasses as forgive those who trespass against us. But there is a second reason why Jesus says we are to love our enemies and pray for our persecutors. Just as the sun shines on everyone and the rain falls on everyone, God does not limit his love only those who are good. So it is not up to us to decide who deserves our love and who doesn't. God doesn't do that, so why should we? The verse in today's gospel that often causes people difficulty is Jesus' advice to be perfect as our Heavenly Father is perfect. So, dear brothers and sisters, is there anything that can help us to forgive those who have hurt us? There are some suggestions that we can offer to people from time to time. Forgiveness is a decision, not an emotion. Hopefully our emotions will follow our decision to forgive, but firstly, we must decide to forgive. 
Forgiveness does not mean plotting out painful memories, but it means not acting out of them. That is why when the hurt is deep, therapy may be necessary to free us from acting out a past negative experience. When people have difficulty forgiving a hurt, I sometimes say to people to repeat to themselves, I will not allow that person to control my life. I take control of my life back from that person. From now on, I will control my life. Another thought can help us to forgive is to remember that Jesus died to save the other person as he died to save all of us. Try to visualize the person being Jesus on the cross. Can you see Jesus dying for that person? Sometimes people say they will forgive if the other person makes an apology. I think that is in some way connected with wanting to control the other person. Forgiving somebody involves giving up the need for an apology and the need to control or dominate the person who hurt us. Surrendering the need to expect them to ask forgiveness free us to forgive them. So dear brothers and sisters, for concluding my homily today, I would like to give all of you some words from St. Teresa of Canada. She was the Nobel Peace Prize in Oslo in 1979. Part of her acceptance speech went like this. It is not enough for us to say, I love God, but I do not love my neighbor. Saint St. John says that you are a liar. If you say you love God and you don't love our neighbor, how can you love God whom you do not see if you do not love your neighbor whom you see, whom you touch, with whom you live? And so this is very important for us to realize that love to be true has to hurt. How can we love like this? We say that to other is human and to forgive is divine. It is a race to forgive and when the hurt is great, we may need to pray a red deal for the race to forgive, Mother Teresa wrote. So, to be able to love one another, we must pray much. For prayer gives a clean heart, and a clean heart we can see God in our neighbor. If now we have no peace, it is because we have forgotten how to see God in one another. Amen. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Please stand and for our prophets. 